This is Ben Allen, founder of BC Allen Publishing Group and Tonic Books, a partnership publishing house. We made this interview for you. Why? Because it is our mission to usher into existence the world's next great wave of life-changing, world-altering books. One of those books could be inside you right now. And no writer can go from idea to bestseller alone. No writer has to. Be sure to check out the other resources we've created for aspiring and established authors and the dozens of interviews we've done with some of the world's best, brightest, and most successful New York Times bestselling authors, world-impacting movement builders, and influencers that reach millions of lives. Do enjoy. I'm here with George Resch, author of Happy is the New Rich uh, and the Tank Sinatra Instagram account, which is just blowing up and sweeping the, the Instagram world with awesome, hilarious memes. Um, Tank, I'm super, super psyched to have you on here. And uh, I just called you Tank. I don't know if you want to be called that in an interview. <laughs> yeah, you I'm, got it. The I'm, only way people know me now. Yeah, that's right. I know. I, that, that's something actually we could talk about as well. And, and I'm super excited to just be picking your brain, man, about your book and about your uh, meme following. And, you know, and I know that you've done even more beyond that. Like you had a Webby Award at one point, like you're an accomplished internet sensation, man. And I'm super excited to talk with you today. All right, me too. Excited Good. to talk. Yeah. Well, dude, tell me a little bit. Let's start, let's start with the book because it was a pleasure for us to be able to publish that and work with you on it. And we just absolutely love it and stand behind it. And uh, a lot of other people do as well, according to the, uh, the sales and the, um, the uh, reviews on Amazon. So tell me a little bit about where that came from. How would you come up with the idea for that book? Uh, tell me a little bit about, about the origins of it. Um, so that book arose out of my need to document every revelation I had, big or small, over a number of years. I I really paid attention to the growth that I was experiencing as I went through different circumstances, you know, regards to relationships, my self-image, family, work, procrastination, like anything that kind of gets people down and holds them back in life. If I ever had a breakthrough moment, I would write it down. And by write it down, I mean you know, in my phone or I would email it to myself. So eventually I had like, you know, thousands of, of notes that I had to pull from. And what happened was this amazing, amazing gentleman reached out to me (laughs) through Instagram. And, um, I had given this interview that in which I stated, I was, you know, what's next for Tank Sinatra. Uh, I'm writing a book. Totally forgot. I even said that. And I had a book that was about a quarter of the way even outlined. It wasn't, it was nothing. It wasn't a book yet. It was just like me vomiting into my computer because I had (laughs) some stuff to get out of my brain. Um, So when, when he asked me what the book was, I was like, well, you know, there's this book, but then there's like, there's also this book, which is not really a book, but it definitely could be a book. And then, you know, when I started talking to you about what it was, you seemed interested. So that was really all I needed. All the only between, your encouragement and the explosive growth of my Instagram account. I mean, listen, dude, if I just continued to sell fence and, and hung out with my family and went to the gym and did regular guy stuff, that book probably never would have seen the light of day. But having the boost of people paying attention to what I was saying gave me the courage and the self-esteem to say, all right, well, if people are interested in this side of my brain, maybe they'll be interested in the other side of my brain, like the more serious, introspective, reflective side of my brain. And then that was the beginning of that process. Yeah, it's awesome, man. I love it. And I know that a big part of the book as well is really like, these are insights that you had. And the purpose of the book is to share those with the world so that other people can get, uh, have similar sort of insights and similar transformations. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I think that anybody who's on the fence in any area of their life and just needs that little push, like, so I, I remember, I don't remember every revelation that I had, but I, none of them arose out of nothing it was always spurred by something i heard from somebody else and that the the way they relayed their information would get my brain going and then my brain would land on okay oh that and then i would write that down so nothing comes from nothing and um if so let's say that i could be that for somebody else let's say somebody's really struggling in their romantic relationships and they read the entire book and there's eight to ten pages in there that all deal with that and and at the end of it they go oh okay and then Look, I'm not, I'm not claiming to like change people's lives or save people's lives, but if I can facilitate a little, you know, get the ball rolling for somebody a little bit and they take it from there, I mean, that's what, what more can you ask for as a yeah. human being? 
you know? That's awesome. I definitely do, man. Yeah, absolutely. That's part of what I think we saw in that book as well. By the way, you just came up with another entry for that book. You said nothing comes from nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're like a meme, you're like a meme factory, man. You just can't stop with the the little expressions. One liners, dude. 140 characters, or or don't say it at all. Yeah, it's great. I know, I, and I love that part of this book as well. The kind of the the idea that this is like you know self help for the iPhone generation. Uh, I think that's a really fun uh, approach. Well, you, also, you know what it is? There's so many people on Instagram that claim to be inspirational and positive and encouraging and motivational, and they're so fucking. Sorry, I don't. I don't know. Oh no, you can swear. That's all right. That's all right. Oh fuck! I think. Fuck. <laughs> well, maybe not too much. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I'll use it. I'll use it here because it, it emphasizes my point. They're so fucking narcissistic. It's mind blowing. It's uh -huh. like, yeah, dude, gotcha. Nobody's gonna read an eight hundred word caption under the picture of your ass. Right. That makes what part of that makes <laughs> any sense to you whatsoever? Yeah. So my feeling is like, if you, if you can't be concise for me, being concise is being considerate. You're, uh, you're paying attention to the fact that people are on the move and they don't have time to, to read an 800, you know, 800 word thought, get it down to like as few words as possible and get it out. And the other benefit of that, the side effect is that they become easy to remember. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. that was the thought process behind all that boiling that we did. Yeah, that's great. I really like that, man. So, okay. So it's already come up a couple of times here, like the idea that, you know, your Instagram blew up and, and, and you're already giving some advice to, on, on how to kind of build the platform, like how to produce good content on, on Instagram. Uh, I know a lot of authors listening to this and a lot of aspiring authors would love to hear from somebody who's built a platform of a million plus. What, what are you at now? 1.1 or 1.2 million? Oh man, I'm so close to 1.2. Like the next day or two, I'll be at 1.2 and I'll feel so good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah, likes equal uh, self-worth, right? Oh, for sure. 100%. <laughs> Deny it all you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, it does. what it does do is it allows you to reach a lot of people, which is pretty amazing. And so like a book like the one you produced, you know, you can reach a lot of lives with a book like that if you've got a bigger platform. So tell you know me. what it is? It's, yeah, it's like when you put when you put something out there like a joke on Instagram. Instagram is a little. I mean, you. It's like a one. It's like one beat away from stand up comedy because in stand up comedy you get to tell a joke and if people laugh they laugh and if they don't laugh they don't laugh. It's right. like you you kind of have to like say a joke in one room and the audience is in another room and you have to like wait to like, Oh my God, did they laugh? Did they think it was funny? It's like, I don't know. I think the algorithm is messing up your joke. They're not hearing it. They can't hear you. Uh -huh. it's, like, it's, it's very difficult to maintain your voice because you become so dependent on the feedback. But the bottom line is your shit might just not be showing up in people's feeds for that first three minutes. But those first three minutes are like do or die. Like I'll delete a post if it doesn't do well in three minutes. And I hate that. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. 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 Fascinating. So tell, okay. So, all right. There's so much we can dig into with this man because you've built a, a several things online here. So tell us a little bit about how you started the Instagram account and how it took off. So the Instagram account is just another iteration of my love for comedy. I mean, I, I've always loved comedy. I've always loved laughing. I know that's not a revolution, re revolutionary thought, but I think I, I appreciate it more than the average person. Like I know people that hate comedy and I just, I, I can't fathom how you could hate comedy. I mean, yeah, I yeah, and they're like, well, it's not funny. It's like, well, you're not watching the right comedy. Let's find the right comedy for you. For you. But um, so this was like me digging in the internet all day long because it's so easy to find content on the internet. It's so easy to find funny content on the internet. And basically, the long story short is that I kind of started posting stuff on my account. I got some good feedback. I started getting reposted by bigger accounts. I started gaining followers and I mean, it just took off from there. That was like the ultimate ball roll. Like the ball started rolling and I could barely even keep up with it. You know what I mean? And so it was partly, it was a result of producing good content, right? Like you said, like you said, uh, what did you say before? Something about um, concise is considerate. So yeah. you had an idea of how to communicate on the, for, on, on the platform, right? Yeah. And then you started getting likes and then you started getting shares. So how did that happen? Did you do anything? Did you engineer that at all to get uh, recognized by larger accounts and shared by larger accounts? Um, you, you can, but it's very difficult to. Basically, you have to have good content. You can engineer it all you want, Ben. Yeah. But if your content sucks, like nobody's going to repost you. And then let's say you have one piece of content that a larger account likes and they repost it. If, if people get to your page and your page isn't good, people aren't going to follow you. So yeah. 
you can you can hack it all you want, but the bottom line is, listen, it's it's very not gra- it's like the opposite of gratifying, but it still feels good. It's like a little adrenaline shot to get a repost by a bigger account. But those followers are not your followers. They're their followers, and you kind of got some spillover. I think it's personally, if you can be patient, it's much better to have organic growth. Um, but the bottom line is some people are not going to grow, and everyone seems hell-bent on growth because they think that growth equals something, whether it's sales or you know recognition or whatever. And growth is good. I mean, growth will get you somewhere, but you got to also build the right platform. You can't build a meme account and then start selling collector knives on there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I do. It's not going to go well for you. You got to, if you want to, if that's your thing, if you're into collectible knives, you got to start posting some stuff about collectible knives and hashtag and, you know, try and pe- try and comment on other people's stuff. That's always good. Commenting. If I could give one, growth hack, I would say that commenting on other people's posts is probably the most respectable and effective and long-term sustainable way to go. That's great. And what kind of comment, like, what do you mean by that? Say anything, more about that. Anything. It doesn't need to be intelligent. I mean, it can't be like, <laughs> ah, you can't just like, <laughs> ah, on a, on, a, on a post. But right. <laughs> if you, so for instance, so Instagram favors, um, content that's getting good feedback. So if you post a comment and it starts getting likes under that person's post, your comment will show up as like the one comment that gets previewed, right? Oh, so, I see, yeah. So, so it gets like, it starts there. It starts at like, you know, you have 80 followers and you post on, you post a comment and you get three likes and now you're like the mainstay comment in the preview. It goes from that all the way to like, you know, a couple of months ago, Kylie Jenner reposted a meme that I had made, but it wasn't credited. So I commented, I said, thanks for posting my meme. That was it. Thanks for posting my meme. Five words, no emojis, no tag, no nothing. I think I got like 9,000 followers overnight from that one comment. Wow. Because I, have, I had a million followers at that point and I'm also verified. So my comment was showing up heavy for hours and hours and hours after the original post. So it was almost as if she had credited me, but it was me kind of weaseling my way in there. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah, I get that. So commenting on other people's posts, it helps their posts get more noticed and it also gets you kind of into the into the internet world and kind of recognized even more. Exactly. Like it's like Gary Gary Vaynerchuk built his whole business on responding tweets, responding to tweets. His whole wine business was built on that. I mean, all day, every day. I mean, it's a little, he was a little obsessive about it, but um, there's definitely something to that. There's something to starting a conversation with somebody on the internet and not asking for something right away. That's the worst. Yeah. Like if somebody comments on my, on my post, follow my page, new memes here. I just, I literally delete it and block that account. I'm not having spam on yeah. my page. Yeah, no, this is really good. So this is adding more. Cause I want to ask you more questions about creating good content. You've already said some awesome things about that. Know your context, know your audience, produce stuff that's like valuable and concise. Right. And then what you're saying here as well, is like, Add, add to the world that don't make a bunch of asks, but actually produce something of value to people that they can connect with kind of freely, uh, you know, without that kind of creepiness of, of, of a demand. Yeah, exactly. Like if you, I remember meeting somebody in Barnes and Noble about 10 years ago and bro, I was in the magazine section. This guy was so nice. He was like, um, you know, he was asking me questions about the magazine I was buying. And it was at a time where I think I was maybe like a little sad and a stranger talking to me made me feel good. I don't remember why. <laughs> I, felt, I don't remember why I felt so happy about it. But yeah. after about 10 minutes, he goes, what would you say if I could offer you financial freedom for the first time in your life? And I was like, bro, get the fuck out of my face with that <laughs> bullshit. Are you want me to sell your vitamins, dude? No. God, I thought you were nice guy you piece of garbage i got so aggravated i didn't yell at the guy but i was basically like damn dude that was a good fake that was a good fake right so it was like if if i had just met that guy and and had a conversation with him and never heard from him again i mean that would have been like that would have been like one of the best interactions with a stranger i ever had but because there was an underlying motive it just erased any of the good, like any of the good vibes that I was getting. You know what I mean? I do, man. This is so huge. So every single author that I've interviewed has said the same thing that like, 
in order to build their platform, in order to like really connect with their audience, they have to do, they have to be of service. Like they're like, of course they're going to, they're, they're eventually is like, you know, it's okay to make money selling books. It's okay to make money speaking or doing whatever. Like there's nothing wrong with that stuff, but to develop relationships, you don't want to start by saying something like give me money. <laughs> right? No, dude. What, what do you, you, if you meet somebody in a deli, what are you going to do? You're going to ask them for a ride to the airport? No, <laughs> that's like, that's a big ass, dude. You got to like, yeah. you got to work your way into those kind of relationships. And even then, even with my friends, I feel like I need to give more than I take just because I get so much out of the friendship. You know yeah, what I mean? Awesome. Yeah, that's so good, man. And I really like what you said too about Gary Vee. Like it's, I had a, a, one author in particular who is just a master online and he said, uh, Make it like a conversation, not a dialogue. He said, make it like a, a dialogue, not a monologue. Yeah. So instead of just like shouting into the internet like a, a, and hoping that people assemble, like actually interact with people in the comment sections and, and go to their page and like stuff on their page and whatever. Yeah, and then for, for, every, for every person that sees that you wrote them a tweet, for, for every 10, maybe you get one follower. That's probably a, pretty, that's probably a little high, but... I mean, if you know what you're talking about, like Gary Vaynerchuk would, would search, you know, he'd search on Twitter, Cabernet. He would see people talking about Cabernet and he'd say, oh, I've had that one. That one's really good. Have you ever had this? He never linked back to his father's store or asked wow. him to in his email list. It was just like, it was something he was passionate about, which is why, you know, people talk about passion a lot. I think passion is important. I think that practicality and pragmatism is also very important. But if you can combine the two, I mean, you're, you're good. Like you're set, especially nowadays where every resource is available to you. It's 2017. There is no excuse. If you have a message and you have something to say and you find that it's, it's eating you up inside, that it's not out there in the world, it, you have no excuse for it not to be out there. That's yeah, awesome, man. You know, the, the excuse is time or uh, fear, right? People are afraid of being seen. So. Yeah, I guess I can understand that, but get over it. I mean, uh, it, or... It's really not that important to you, which is also totally fine. Yeah, dude, I, this is really good. I want to pause on this for one second and really let like anybody who's going to be listening to this, let that sink in. So you're a guy who's built a platform of a million plus. You've built other things online. I mean, you've got, you know, you've had a bunch of celebrity promotions. Like you're just a guy who's, who shows up pretty big in the world. And you say the advice to people that you have, and this is so key for authors to listen to if they're afraid, is get over it. Like, that's all you said. There wasn't some elaborate thing. It's just get over it, right? That's huge, though, George. That says so much. Um, yeah, I mean, figure out if it's important enough for you to take the leap. If it's not, listen, if the risk is not, you know, if the reward is not worth the risk, nobody would ever do anything. So right. I'm not telling you to quit your job and lock yourself in a cabin in the mountains and write a book. I'm saying, like... <laughs> Figure it out. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. important to you. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So discover. So do the deep work and discover whether it's important, and then show up and get out of your get out of and, your own. And head. listen, if you find that it's not filling the filling the need that you thought you had, abandon it and move on to the next thing. That's great. Did this happen for you in writing the book or building any of these online platforms that you've built? Oh like, my god! Yeah, probably, of course. All right, every, tell us a little bit about every that. Every single one, except for the Instagram. I've had. Bro, I've taken, I've shot so many shots. Um, I guess the, the two biggest ones were the one that I won the Webby Award for, ifoundmoneytoday.com, where I, I got a lot out of that spiritually and emotionally. I felt really good about what I was doing. Yeah. And the reason was, or the reason is, it was at a time when the internet was like grabbing everybody by the throat and like you could not escape the internet anywhere. I think it was like 2009 or 10 and it was like, there were no more flip phones. <laughs> Everybody, uh -huh. you know what I mean? You remember that time where it was like, oh, it wasn't weird if somebody had a flip phone. It was just like cool that somebody had an iPhone. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So it was around that time. And I, I, the way it was born was I had promised my stepdaughter money for something. I don't remember what it was. It was like cleaning her room or doing her laundry or whatever. But I promised her five bucks. So... I, I was in the car and I said, oh, Liana, you know what? I forgot to give you that money that I promised you for that thing. And she was in the back and her eyes just opened up like, uh, <laughs> you know, like, oh, oh my God, you're going to give me, you're really going to give me that money. So I took the $5 out of my pocket and bro, she exalted like nothing I'd ever seen before. And I was like, damn, people love money. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like even that young, bro, she was like five at the time. I was like, wow, people really love money. 
Um, and then I remembered a, a little like story that is like a, a, it's an, it's something you can add on to a story to make it more interesting. And basically it's like, if you ever find yourself in a position where you're telling a story and the story sucks, you just go, Oh, and then I found 20 bucks and it like makes the whole story good. Have you ever heard that before? Uh, yeah, I think I get that. Yeah. So, yeah. so it was like, okay, so finding money is cool for everybody. That's established. We, we've right. got that. So how do I do it? Right. So I remember being in Dunkin' Donuts and I was like, I'm going to leave money here. Five bucks right on the, uh, right on the sink. And then I was like, why? And then I was, and then I was, I was having this conversation in my head. I'm like, yeah, but what if somebody sees it? And then I was like, yeah, that's the whole point. You dumbass. And then I was like, well, what if somebody knows it was you and they come running out after you? Well, you get out of there fast. So, I mean, bro, I can't explain why I was so nervous to leave that money on the sink, but I was like, I was nervous. I have no idea why. So, yeah. so I, I leave the money on the sink and I walk out and I, I mean, I was like walking on clouds. I was like, that was incredible. Someone's going to find that and it's going to make their day like 7% better than it was no matter what's going on in their life. So then I did it the next day, then the next day, and then I started documenting it and I made a website and that was what I won the web before. Now the, the best part of that whole process was, again, it was around that time that the internet was really taking a hold of everything and it was like, it seemed like everywhere you looked on the internet, people were doing, shitty people were doing shitty things for shitty reasons every single day, all the time, everywhere, across the globe. Mm -hmm. And what I found was that as I started to put this website out there, and this feeling and this, this intention that I had, I started connecting with people that were doing amaz amazing people that were doing amazing things all over the world every day. And it was like one of those moments where I realized you get what you put in. Like you get back what you put in, in everything. So that was the lesson that I got from that. Yeah. And did you have like, was there fear in doing this for you? Did you, did, was there anything you had to overcome around this? Um, it was, you know, the barrier for starting it was very low because I used the blog and I just kind of uploaded the pictures and wrote the words. It wasn't like a lot of time that went yeah. into it. That's what I'm saying. Like if you go on WordPress or you go on Squarespace, oh, you don't have a website for your business. Okay. Do you have 10 minutes to make a website <laughs> for your business? Uh -huh. You don't have a website for your business. It doesn't need to be like Vogue.com with all interactive flash player garbage. You need a picture, some words and a link for people to go to your Shopify and buy whatever you're selling. You know what I mean? It's so easy to yeah. get stuff done these days. So I love it. No, nah, yeah. no fear. Yeah. Yeah. But just, but just action, man, you got over it. You had something you were passionate about and you took a bunch of action to put the thing together. You know, I don't, uh, the only thing that I got nervous about was leaving that money, but that's typical for me. Like I've, like if, if I, if I decide I'm going to give a homeless person money, I get nervous before. I don't know why. Huh. Like I, you know what I mean? I get very uncomfortable. Like I know I'm doing a good thing, but it's like, Oh fuck. Um, I don't know why I, I wish I felt compelled. Like I feel internally compelled. And then something inside me is like, Oh man, everyone's going to think you're an asshole. I don't know. I have no idea why. That's strange. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I got to circle back to something else in this. Sure. So you, you've had a bunch of uh, celebrity endorsements. You know, you've got Tony Hawk, uh, Juliet, what was her name? Juliet Davis? Juliet Lewis. Juliet Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've had a whole bunch of people um, uh, and, and others as well. I mean, you get your Gary Vee interview. Uh, you know, you just, you're, you're connected. Uh, how does that work? How, how did you get that? Was that a result of having the big platform or was that some, the way that you used it or was that some combination or did that have to do with this kind of service that you, that you talk about, you know, this offering to the world rather than just demanding? Yeah, you know what? I think it was it was like one of those things where the the timing was right, and I was doing something that these people thought was cool and valuable and wanted to know more about. Like I'm I'm never I, I'm constantly surprised by the fact that like I remember when Tony Hawk sent me a picture of him wearing my shirt. Right now, Tony Hawk was somebody that I looked up to, like idolized. I don't I I, I said at a, as a kid I never idolized anybody. I idolized Tony Hawk. I thought he was like the man, right? So I get a picture of him wearing my shirt and holding a skateboard. And I was at a Yankee game, which I never go to. I just happened to be at a Yankee game that night because my friend Dave had tickets. And I showed him the picture and Dave was like, Oh, that's great. I was like, bro, what is going on in my life? And Dave was like, bro, he probably thinks you're cool. Like <laughs> he's not, you know what I mean? Like he's not Tony Hawk anymore, but you are Tank Sinatra. Like you're on the come up. You're like the cool 
you know, the, 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 you're doing a cool thing at a good, at a, at the right time right now. And I was just like, all right, that makes sense. Like I just happened to be doing something that people find valuable on a large platform. I don't know how else to explain it. It's not, there's yeah. no, there's no magic to it. It's just like right place, right time, right thing. Yeah. Yeah. And consistency, like adding good, adding cool content consistently. Uh, it seems well, like it's essential as well. Well, for sure. I, I always say that, you know, if you, you're never going to be in the right place at the right time, if you don't go places at different times, like you have to keep doing stuff. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. And so, and Instagram kind of was the, like the lightning in a bottle, like you had done a bunch of different things and then this one really took off. Yeah. And I, I thank God that I chose Instagram to hang my hat on. Cause I had, I chosen Facebook or vine or, I mean, even Snapchat now, everything just crumbles under the weight of Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like it's still growing as well. Oh, it's such a powerhouse, dude. It's so good to be on there. Yeah. So lucky. So what about some, fo- you know, and it does pretty well. So what about uh, for people who want to start out with that? you have any suggestions? I mean, we've already covered a whole lot, but I don't know if you have any ideas on, uh, on somebody getting started trying to build a platform on there. Well, the, the first thing you can do is start posting right? Yeah. The second thing you do is try and connect with some people who, you know, let's, if you have five followers, you don't want to link up with someone who has six, because that's not really going to get you anywhere. You got to, you know, you go for, and, and you're not, you're not going to get anywhere commenting on Justin Bieber's photos or The Rock either, because you're just going to get buried. So you got to choose kind of a sweet spot <laughs> where you got to start somewhere that you feel like you can get in. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you're, whatever your demographic is, because there's, depends on what you're into. If you're into, you know, hunting or fashion or sports or whatever, you got to like, you got to make a choice and say, this is what I'm going to be into. You can't, if you want to grow it, listen, if you just want to have a personal page and post a picture of you in a suit one day and then holding a dead bear the next day, like go for it, but you're not going to grow. Yeah. So you got to get niched down. Yeah. It's too much in one. It's you're all over the place at that point. And why does the niching help? What, what does that do? What's the function of that? As much as I hate this, um, it, people like predictability. They like to know that if they follow you because of somebody, because of the fact that somebody tagged them in a meme of yours, that next time you post something, it's going to be a meme. So there's this guy um, on Instagram who I think is probably one of the best meme creators out there. He's in, uh, he's in England. And he's just stuck at 80,000 because like every three posts is a picture of him and oh. nice guy, nice, not, you know, he's a nice looking guy, whatever. He's just, people don't, they don't want to see that. Like you're, that's not why they're there. And I know that from experience because I've posted pictures of myself on the page. And when I was promoting the book or if there's anything that slightly goes out of the idea of what people think they're going to get when it comes to my page, some, the, listen, 99% of them are cool, but then there's the 1% who are like, yeah, stick to memes. Okay, stick to being blocked. Bye. <laughs> okay, good. This is perfect. So how do you deal with the haters, man? This is something uh, that I think all authors are going to come across. Famous authors talk about this. I mean, there's just so many people that I've got some authors that I work with who are funny. They like, they skim through all the reviews and they just dwell on the bad ones. <laughs> like, you know, everybody gets that. Like, that's a part of being uh, present on the internet is you're going to have people, uh, you know, throwing shade. So how do you deal with that? I think the more authenticity you display on Instagram or on the internet or in life in general, the less you're going to care about people giving you negative feedback. And what I mean by that is like when I wrote, when I, when I put the book out, like, yeah, some of the negative comments were just unnecessary and like, it's almost angry online. You know what it is, Ben, for me personally, the worse the comment is, the less it affects me. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So if it's like, you're a piece of garbage and I hope your mom dies in front of you today. It's like, damn dude, I, I'm sorry you feel that way about life. If someone's like, yeah, I read no. 72 and I didn't like it. I'm like, why? Right. Why? You know, it's like the, the really like the mildly trollish comments seem to get, get to me more, but I, I relate to that guy. I'll read 99 comments. And the last one is like, it could be 99. Oh my God, this book changed my life. You're the greatest person ever. And one, Eh, it was okay. And I'm like, well, what went wrong there? <laughs> <laughs> so how do you deal with that, man? Or how would you advise people to deal with that? Because that's something that I think holds a lot of authors back. Or at least it takes a lot of their creative energy out. Well, 
it's dishonest to do that. You know, same way. Like, that sounds awesome. It's, it's dishonest to look at a hundred comments, 99 of them are good. And one oh, is in, and, and you define it by, you define that your, your, the entire perception of your, your work by that one person, because I don't know why negative comments are weighted so heavy in my mind and in other people's minds, but it's like, you have a hundred comments, 99 of them are good. Those not, each one of those 99 comments is worth like 0.001%. And that negative comment is worth 20. So that one negative comment outweighs all the other ones. I don't know why. I wish it was different. The way I deal with it is just by, I kind of like, I feel bad kind of for the people that feel the need to go on the internet and be mean to strangers for attention. And yeah. The other thing that kind of keeps me at bay a little bit is I've actually responded to a couple of those people that are, they're just trying to get your attention. Like I've, right. I've had people be like, this book sucked. I can't believe you even wrote it. You're such a loser. Why would you put this out? And I'll write to them like, Hey, you know, why would you say something like that? And they, they're like, Oh my God, you responded. Like, bro, why would you do that? It's so oh, weird. Yeah. It's so strange. But the, those experiences in the back of my mind, Kind of like I don't want to give them the satisfaction of even letting them know that I saw their comment, you know? Yeah, because yeah. sometimes it's – so there's something about that, which is like – this is actually really fascinating uh, to hear about, is that when you – when somebody presents something online, the, the outward-facing, overt intention may not even be the actual intention behind it. That's exactly. actually really valuable for people to hear. Oh, yeah. And I would say that's about half the time. The other half is like real garbage people. Yeah, people just being mad about whatever in their <laughs> life and, and wanting to like make somebody else mad. <laughs> you know what it is, especially when you write a book because it's something that's been it's been around for so long and everybody knows what a book is and everyone knows that people write books and I'm sure that tons of people have thought at some point in their life, I want to write a book. And if I think those people are more likely to see somebody who's actually written one and be a dick. Yeah. Never thought about it. Yeah, because they get there's like a little bit of hate, like a little hater attitude in there. That's like, oh, this person took a risk and did this thing, and 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 they're internally judging themselves and not doing it. A hundred percent. It's like a mirror. And what do you do when you yeah. see something you don't like in the mirror? You punch the mirror like a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> right, or at least that's what that's what's been happening on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> it's great, George. So tell me a little bit, of, man. I want to know you. I know you've got shirts out. I want to hear a little bit more about like what you've got going on in your world. What can people where can they find you? Uh, um, yeah, give us a little bit of sense of that. What, what do you have going on? Where can people find you? What's coming next? So the, the best way to get me is definitely on Instagram, at tank.sinatra. Um, best memes on the internet, right? Best original memes on the oh, internet. Nice. <laughs> For sure. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's, it, it's, I'm glad to be able to. Bro, I get so many messages from people say, saying, like, you know, I was having a shitty day. And this thing you posted kind of turned it around like that to me is those comments carry a lot of weight with me. Yeah. Those comments are like worth 50. If that negative little comment is worth 20, that those, the, the ones that people actually took the time to go to my page, click on the thing on the upper right hand side, send message. I was having a bad day and your humor helped me get out of it. Those are worth a lot, but yeah, that's so good. Um, you know, I have a lot of stuff going on right now. Unfortunately, um, I can't disclose any of it because it's all like NDA style stuff, but yeah, it's yeah. nothing crazy. It's just like, it's, it's whatever. It's nothing that if people follow me or they follow you and you relay the information, it's nothing that, that people won't know about within like the next three to six months. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Yeah. That's great. And I know you got t-shirts as well though, right? You guys still selling those? Yeah. Um, the t-shirts I kind of lost interest in because. Cause the book was so why. bomb. The book, bro, was like everything. You know what yeah. I mean? The shirts at one point, it's like the more you do, the, the less the big thing in your life six months ago matters. Like when I came out with T-shirts, it was like all I thought about was T-shirts, T-shirts, T-shirts. Then, I mean, to, but to be honest with you, I only wanted the T-shirts out there because I wanted Happy is the New Rich out there. Right. Right. So then once we had the book, it was like, not only is happy is the new rich available, all the stuff behind it is available in the book. So if people were going to buy one or the other, I would definitely rather have them buy the book. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. It kind of leaves a bigger, I, I know what you mean. It, it's more ideas. It's more impact potentially. 
Um, yeah, that's great, man. I, I want to just echo back again. One, one last thing that, that came up in this is you talk a lot about really just serving your audience. I know we already mentioned that in this, in this call here, but uh, I just want to really drive that point home. So many of the, the successful people I know um, in, in this kind of world of personal development stuff or who are writing books like this or even, and it's cool that even in the world of comedy, right? Like you're in the world of comedy, which is like adjacent to this uh, world of personal development. It's still about service. You know, yeah. it's still about like really just connecting with people in a way that's meaningful and offering value to their lives. And I think when you have that intention, like things can happen. That's one of those ways of being consistent in a good way that will, that will produce some awesome results. So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if, if this was about me, it would go nowhere. Yeah. Right. You right. Know? Right. Yeah. And it's, I mean, about- listen, it's, it's a little bit about me, but it's, <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. if I was the only one reading my posts, it would go nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, that's so, I get it, man. I totally get it. Yeah, it's great. Um, well, George, it, it is absolutely a pleasure to talk with you, my man. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and such a joy. Uh, you're just such a good, good guy, such a big heart, uh, and just so much to offer the world. And I'm just so happy to be able to point people in your direction. Um, Same here. And the last thing I like to, uh, to do on these calls is ask you, now we've probably already, d- or we may have already covered it in the call, but if you had one bit of advice for an aspiring author, somebody who was looking to, to write a book, or an established author who was looking to write another one, or somebody who wanted to build something big with their book, you know, what, w- what would that bit of advice be? If you had one, one, one thing to offer here, and it might have been something we already came up with. Um, I, I don't think it came up in the call, and I hate to be so, it's not dismissive, it's just what worked for me. Yeah. So around that time that um, we were working together, and I was kind of like, eh, man, like this is gonna be a big project, I, I had asked a couple of people that I knew had written books and I said, do you have any advice? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Do you have any advice for me as far as writing this book goes? And this guy, Chris Brogan, who I think we've spoken about, he was, you know, he's written like nine books. He said, well, I mean, it'll definitely help if you start writing. And I was like, (laughs) I just started laughing. I was like, oh, okay. So, but I had heard that before and I kind of took it as like an insult. Like I know that dick could start writing. Okay. Anything else? (laughs) I mean, I wanted like a magic key. I wanted some kind of easier way to do this. And there is absolutely no way to write a book if you're not writing. So whether you're writing every day, eight hours a day, one hour a day, like you got to start chipping away at it. And like, if you have, you got to figure out what you want to say, who you want to say it to and start saying it Mm -hmm. and take, take like solace in the fact that I think a lot of writers are very wordy people and, they're, and we're very heady people and we like to think a lot. And I, I love the fact that my computer is like a captive audience who is not judging even a word coming out of what I'm, what I'm saying, coming out of my fingers. I can say anything to that computer and nothing bad is going to happen, you know? That's great, man. That's really good. Yeah, I, that's such good advice, right? And then uh, what, what's in there as well that, that I'm distinguishing is like, when you're writing, you don't need to worry too much about being judged yet. Just write. You know, think about who you're trying to serve. Think about what you want to say, and then just say it. And then yeah, go and it. you'll be you'll be judged later. Don't worry. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dude, George, such a pleasure to have you on here, man. And uh, yeah, man, just happy to have you in my life, brother. Thank you, Ben. Same here. If you want more interviews like this, check us out at tonicbooks.online. In addition to other resources, we've made dozens of interviews like this to support aspiring and established authors who want to write, publish, and market their book with ease and impact. For more details, check out the description below.